Welcome everybody to Paint Secrets Revealed, how to prepare a wall for painting. In today's video we're going to have a look at the equipment required to get the job done and we're also going to have a look at the correct techniques to make sure you get a professional looking finish. And of course we're going to throw in a few secret tips here and there that only the professionals know. So let's get started. Uh, for today we're going to need some washing down equipment, so your bucket, your mop and some cleaning agents that we'll go through in a bit more detail uh, a bit later on. Uh, we're going to need some basic tools, we're going to need your hammer, trusty putty knife and also your dust brush. We're also going to need some basic items such as a rubbish bin and a rag and then we get to the important stuff. We're going to need a caulking gun and some flexible filler to go with the gun as well as some corner cement. Now to apply the corner cement you'll need two flexible metal knives, a little bit of water and a mixing board and we'll show you how to do that a bit later on as well. Uh, you'll also need a short ladder and if you don't have one hopefully you can borrow one off a friend. To make sure we have a super smooth finish we're going to use some 120 grit sandpaper for today uh, both with the hand sander and with the uh, extendable sander as well. Now of course we just need our trusty broom to get rid of all those cobwebs and that's all the equipment you're going to need for today. So the first step is we want to remove any protruding nails or picture hooks. So we grab the old trusty hammer and it's simply a matter of removing the hooks and you will find though if you remove the hook that the surface, the edge around the hole might be a bit proud. So you just want to give it a little love tap, make sure it's nice and smooth there and if it's still a little bit, you know, you can feel the edge, just grab the old 120 grit sandpaper and give it a light sand because we want to have this area as smooth as possible and just feel it with your fingertips and you'll know when you got it right. Now it's time to clean the surface. Uh, you know you've been putting off dusting for a while so grab that broom and you want to get rid of all those cobwebs, all the dirt and dust that's been accumulating over the years because if you don't that's going to show straight through the paintwork. Now we want to get this wall super clean so we're going to use a mop, a bucket of warm water and we've got a couple of options here. You can choose to use the sugar soap and that'll give you a pretty decent result but what we recommend using is a product called Tricleanium. Now it's a powerful product, it gives a great clean, it's what all the pros use so we recommend you use it as well. Uh, when you are using it we would recommend you use uh, the old rubber gloves just to protect your hands because it is 100% alkaline salts and it may hurt your hands if you don't use the gloves. So for a decent sized wall all you need is a cap full of the stuff so just measure it out, chuck it in and you'll see that it'll start to dissolve although a fair bit of it will also you know sort of stick to the bottom. So what we need to do is grab the mop and just work the bottom of the bucket. Make sure that all the powder in there has dissolved before you start wiping down the walls. Now wiping down the walls is just like mopping your kitchen floor. You just want to get rid of you know most of the excess water and then just have at it. Pay particular attention to any of those deep stains uh, and if you find it's not coming off with the mop just use a little hand sponge and use the green part of it and that should get rid of the, the deeper stains. And as you can see, the water's pretty filthy. It's not a glamorous job, but your paint will thank you for it later on. Now for some fun stuff, we're going to fill some gaps and the first thing we need to do is set up the caulking gun with the filler. Now this is used for cracks where there will be some movement, uh, commonly found between wall joints. And the first thing we need to do is open up the hard seal of the packaging. Now we recommend using a Stanley knife for this. You always cut away from yourself, don't want to lose a finger. And in the packaging as well, you should have a plastic nozzle, which helps feed the filler into the cracks. Now straight out of the, the packet, the nozzle has a straight edge to it. Now we recommend cutting the nozzle at a 45 degree angle. This is another little secret tip that will make your life a little bit easier as it improves the flow of the filler as you run it down the crack of the wall. Also make sure when you do make the cut that you take away any of the, the little plastic bits which will affect the smoothness of your run. Alright now we're ready to go, we just need to load the tube into the gun. The gun has a hand grip trigger which pushes through the filler uh, through to the nozzle and it also has a thumb trigger on the back which will stop the flow. So as you can see we're putting a bit of slight pressure on the trigger and the filler is starting to come through the nozzle. Now using that pressure on the trigger you can increase or decrease the flow of that filler. 
And once you're happy that you've filled the gap, it's simply a matter of clicking on the back trigger to stop the flow. We've identified a crack that needs to be filled, so we take the corking gun and we apply constant pressure to the hand trigger to start the flow of the filler. And then we gently run the nozzle down the crack until it is filled. Uh, once it's filled, you need to click the thumb trigger to stop the flow, and then we need to smooth it out. You can do that by just simply wetting your finger and running your finger down the crack, but what if you don't like to get dirty? Uh, a wet sponge will also do the trick. Once you've filled all the cracks, we're now ready to fill the holes in the wall using our corner cement. The reason we use corner cement is it's uh, quick drying. It sets like a rock and you can paint it as soon as it dries. So that's why most professionals use it because when they prepare a wall, they're gonna paint it the same day. So what you need is a nice dollop of corner cement. Obviously we've got a big bucket here, but you can, it's sold in smaller amounts. And what you wanna do is build a little mountain, a little volcano, and hollow out the middle. Just pretend you're back in primary school. This is also commonly known as a, a well. And what we need to do is pour a small amount of water into the well and then using the edges, uh, basically with our knives, our cement knives, we pour in the cement into the middle. Slowly work the cement uh, into the middle of your pile. And as you can see, the consistency at the moment is still pretty dry. So what you need is a touch of water just to increase the flexibility of the cement. Now you need to work the cement into the water until it turns into a nice paste um, that's still flexible and flexible enough that you can move it from one knife to the other. Now I should have mentioned earlier that it's really important to have a clean pair of knives before you start because any sort of old cement or bumps and grinds will actually affect the finish of the holes that you're going to fill. Correct technique is really important when you're using corner cement to fill holes. So you want to attack the holes uh, with a small you know, dollop of cement on the knife, come down a downwards motion, and then finish with a horizontal motion to get rid of any excess cement. So the more you work the cement between the two knives, the, the harder it will get and you do only have a limited amount of time uh, to work with it. So if you do have a deeper hole, what you can do is build it up, as you can see from this example. So any type of shallow holes, the corner cement will do the job. As you can see, this wall here was really damaged. So what we need to do here is just lay it on, uh, lay it on pretty thick. and then wipe it away. Same technique. All you're looking to do is get the corner cement flush with the wall. And it's important to remember any excess cement that you leave on the wall, you're gonna to have to sand away later. So do yourself a favor. When you're filling the holes, make sure you get rid of the excess cement. If you find you have deeper holes in the wall, what you want to do is actually build it up as much as possible with the corner cement and then walk away. Let it dry. Uh, it's not going to be flush with the wall, but then come back and give it another filling. And that way you'll find that any hole, no matter how deep it is, you'll be able to fill correctly. So there's two options you can use to sand the walls. We've got the hand sander or we've got the uh, the pole sander. Now obviously we recommend using the pole sander because if you've got a large wall, the hand sander, it's gonna break your back and you're gonna need a ladder to get up to those hard to reach places. Now the sandpaper is the same as we were using before, 120 grit. You simply unscrew one side of the hand sander, screw it down make sure it's locked in place, run the sandpaper on the bottom of the hand sander and then slide it in on the other side. Now this job can be a little bit finicky so try not to throw the hand sander against the wall. 
So here's the finished product, uh, the hand sander and the pole sander, both ready to go. Now what you want to do is basically sand every part of the wall. So a little demonstration here with the hand sander, it'll take you 10 years. So go out, grab yourself a pole sander. They are adjustable, so you can change the height by simply screwing the handle. Once you've got it in a position that feels comfortable, just sand the wall. The key to sanding the wall with a pole sander is to always keep contact with the wall. You'll find that if you don't keep that constant pressure against the wall, the sander will flip and what you'll end up doing is gouging a big hole in your wall that you're going to have to fill later on. So always have that continuous pressure on the pole as you move it up and down. And if you see areas with uh, strong imperfections, really use some elbow grease and a lot of hard pressure to get them out. Once the wall is nice and smooth, we're going to tape up the skirting boards. Now we do this to protect the skirting boards from our wall paint. There's quite a few different options that we can choose when it comes to masking tape. And behind door number one, we have the cream colored masking tape. Now this is your cheapest uh, masking tape on the market and it'll do the job just fine. If you're looking to spend a bit more money, we have the blue masking tape and it's what we call a low tactile tape. And we found that it actually doesn't stick amazingly well and you might find it curling up on us. So the one we recommend is the green. We found that it stays on really well and the paint doesn't seep down the back of it. And basically the green tape is the one that we use and recommend to use all the time. And it does come in larger sizes, so depending on what you're taping up. Taping up the skirting boards can be a little tricky, so slow and steady really is the uh, order of the day. So you want to take a length of the tape and basically start at the corner and anchor it down, making sure it meets at the very bottom of where the wall meets the skirting board. Once you're happy with the placement, run your fingers on it to stick it down and then move your fingernail backwards to make sure it's all stuck down nicely. All you need to do now is continuously feed out more masking tape as you go and just run your fingernail across to make sure it's nice and flat. Now we are coming towards the end of our video and we do thank you for watching. If you really want a truly professional finish then obviously we recommend hiring a professional. You know, the art of painting takes years to master. But if you don't mind giving up your weekends and you know, you're happy to have a crack, we hope this video has you know, pointed you in the right direction and given you a few tips uh, to make sure you prepare your wall to a professional standard. And if you're looking for any other tips and tricks, please visit our website at paintsecretsrevealed.com. Now on the website, you'll find a whole bunch of useful information, including frequently asked questions, uh, how to get in contact with us, as well as of course all our how-to videos and before we go don't forget to tape up your powerpoints can be a bit of a rookie mistake and with that the preparation is complete thanks for watching and i hope you enjoy our other videos as well